Good morning everybody and welcome to our morning prayer for Tuesday the 20th of October. I hope you are all well. Uh, and today I'll be using the model of Lecture 365, a shorter version of morning prayer. And this particular morning prayer is based on the theme of mission. So let's pause and ask God to be with us now as we pray. So as we enter prayer now, we pause to be still, to breathe slowly, and to recenter our scattered senses on the presence of God. God of rescue and restoration, thank you for your great and beautiful mission in the world. Here I am, Lord. Fill me with your spirit and send me. We rejoice today in all the excellent things that God does, joining in the ancient praise of all God's people in the words of Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him, yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Today we're going to reflect briefly on the story of Joseph. Joseph's mission will be to convey God's blessing to the nations, but his path will not be an easy one. Indeed, Joseph's life reads like the plot of a Hollywood movie. A teenage, boy, a, a teenage boy has a dream. The dream turns into a nightmare, but he triumphs in the end. The story begins with Joseph at home with his father, Jacob, also known as Israel, and it is complicated. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered round mine and bowed down. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he'd said. The translators of the King James Bible described Joseph's ornate robe as a coat of many colours. But a kehoneth pasim is more interesting than that. It was a garment worn by the son or daughter of a king. This wasn't just a fancy jacket for Joseph to show off in. It was actually a sign that he was marked out for greatness. Following the way of Jesus may mean my life choices differ from those of other people, even those close to me. However, sometimes it can feel embarrassing to wear my robe of kindness and justice in public. Let's pray. Lord, we ask for boldness. Help us never to be self-righteous or annoying, but to always honour you in the way we live. Amen. So let's ask ourselves, what is God calling us to that might, might mark us out from the crowd? We pray again. Lord, you have blessed us with many good things and given us purpose. Help us to remember 
that the gifts which we have received are not for us because we're special, but so that we might serve others. Amen. So, who can we help and serve today? Let's return to the passage and let's open our ears to hear God's word and our hearts to yield to his will once again. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered round mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he'd said. Joseph was young and certainly unwise in the way he told his story to the brothers. The dream was genuine, but the telling smacked of ego. He relished the idea of his older brothers bowing before him. It was very different when, on the 28th of August 1963, the 34-year-old Dr Martin Luther King Jr. stood at the Washington Memorial and gave perhaps the greatest speech of the 20th century. I have a dream, he said, that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin. He knew his mission, to give voice to the voiceless and bring justice where there was none. But like Joseph, his dream challenged the assumptions of many who heard his words and, like Joseph, he was hated for his dream and for what he'd said. Let's pray. Father, we yield to your dream for our lives. Help us to abandon our small ambitions and to open our hearts to your bigger calling and purpose so that, whatever the cost, our lives may make a difference in the world. And today we take strength from God's promise in Romans 8 verse 28, so that no matter what trouble we face or what mistakes we make along the way, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. A closing prayer. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hope you have a great day and do tune back in to our YouTube channel for future morning prayers and other services. God bless.